Welcome to my lecture online. Here before us we have eight examples of how we should multiply fractions. So let's go through each of the eight and see if we get the right answer. On the first one it's fairly straightforward. Again we must multiply the numerators together and then we multiply the denominators together. So 3 times 4 is equal to 12 and 5 times 7 is equal to 35. Then we try to see if we can simplify that answer, reduce it to lower uh, terms, but in this case I don't think that's the case because 35 is only divisible by 5 and 7 and 12 is only divisible by 2 and by 3. So we cannot reduce that anymore. Let's try the next one. Again, we multiply all the numerators together. So it would be 1 times 2 times 7, which is 14, divided by 3 times 5 times 5. 5 times 5 is 25 times 3 is 75. And it looks like, again, there's no way that we can reduce that any further. But now notice the third exercise, we actually have it repeated here, the exact same one, because we're going to do that one in two different ways. First, we're simply going to multiply everything together. 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 6 is 48. Then we divide that by 5 times 3 times 5, so 5 times 5 is 25, times 3 is 75. And now we see if we can reduce that. And it looks like we can divide that by 3, both the numerator and the denominator, because when we add 4 and 8 together, that's 12, and 12 is divisible by 3. We add 7 plus 5 together, we get 12 again. Again, that's divisible by 3, so we know that both the numerator and the denominator can be divided by 3. When we divide 3 into the numerator, we get, let's see here, that would equal 16, because 16 times 3 is 48. And when we divide the denominator by 3, we get 25. At this point, it looks like we cannot reduce it any farther, so that's the final answer. But we can do that one in a different way. Notice, before we multiply all the numerators together and all the denominators together, we could reduce any numerator with any denominator because we are multiplying these together. These are indeed factors, and therefore, we can, for example, reduce the 6 and the 3 here, we can divide this 3 by 3, that gives us 1. We can divide this 6 by 3, which gives us 2. And now when we multiply these together, we get the same answer as we had over there. 4 times 2 times 2, which is 16, divided by 5 times 1 times 5, which is 25. So sometimes it's better, or actually quite often it's better, to first reduce any numerators with any denominators, if possible, before you multiply them all together which means it's going to be a lot easier to, to finish that, that exercise, to finish that multiplication. We're going to do the same over here. Now notice we can either show multiplication sign by putting a dot there, or we can simply put the parentheses around it with a space in between, which really means that we're multiplying those together. We don't have to put a dot there. It simply implied that's a, that is a multiplication. So before we're going to multiply this through, notice we have a 9 here and we have a 27 there. Both are divisible by 9, so 9 divided by 9 is 1, and 27 divided by 9 is 3. And then we have a 15 and a 35. Both of those are divisible by 5 because they end in a 5. So 15 divided by 5 is 3, and 35 divided by 5, by 5 is 7. Now we can multiply the numerators and the denominators together. So 3 times 3 gives us 9, and 7 times 1 gives us 7. So that makes it a lot easier to multiply those fractions together. Here, when we have 25 divided by 8 times 24, we could, just to make it easier to see, write this as a fraction of 24 divided by 1. So this can be written as 25 divided by 8 times 24 over 1. And then before we multiply that out, we see that 8 and 24 are both divisible by 8. 8 goes in 24 3 times. So 8 divided by 8 is 1, 24 divided by 8 is 3. And then we have only 1's in the denominator, and we have uh, 25 and 3 in the numerator, so it means it's 75 over 1, or simply just 75. We don't have to write it as a fraction over 1. On the next exercise, again, we see a 4 and a 12, and we see a 5 and a 35. 4 and 12 are both divisible by 4. 5 and 35 are both divisible by 5, so we can simplify before we multiply them together. So 4 divided by 4 is 1, 12 divided by 4 is 3, 35 divided by 5 is 7, Oop, there we go, and 5 divided by 5 is 1, oh, I keep wanting to write something different there, 
There we go. So now we have 3 times 1 in the numerator and 1 times 7, this is a 7 here, in the denominator. So the final answer is 3 divided by 7. So you can see that these are much easier and faster to do when you simplify things first. Here, notice we have a 5 and a 15. We have 120 and 180. It looks like we can simplify this a little bit more. Both the 5 and the 15 are divisible by 5. So 5 divided by 5 is 1. 15 divided by 5 is 3. Here, the 180 and the 120, they both end in a 0, which means they can both be uh, divided by 10. So if I divide 180 by 10, the 0 disappears. If I divide 120 by 10, the 0 disappears. Of course, we need to do that at the same time. And now we have an 18 and 12. We can see that they're both divisible by 6. So 12 divided by 6 is 2, and 18 divided by 6 is equal to 3. And then we have a 3 and a 3 here, so this 3 and this 3 can be divided by 3, so that becomes a 1 and a 1. And now our fraction becomes 1 times 1, which is 1 in the numerator, and 2 times 1, which is 2 in the denominator. And see how much easier it is to multiply them out, simplify them first before you multiply them if you can, and that makes the job a lot easier. And that's how it's done.